boat goes ever on and on down from the door what's that it's filming well i didn't know how to start the video and this solves that problem doesn't it thanks gandalf <laughs> friends and enemies. Welcome to Horror and Inconvenience, where things are usually spooky and always weird. Today is my first ever single title review, and I don't really know what I'm doing, so bear with me. I didn't know what to put in the background either, so I just chose some kind of ominous Edward Gorey drawings, because it's never a bad time for Edward Gorey. Anyway, uh, today, I'll be reviewing The Journey by William Willie Wilson. I'm still processing this book, but um, I'm going to do my best because I want to be part of this conversation. Uh, so, if you've seen The Journey going around Horror Booktube, and I'm sure you have by this point, uh, Here's the deal with it. Um, this is a horror novel. I, I guess you could call it extreme horror. Maybe. There's probably going to be some debate about that. And honestly, I don't read a lot of extreme horror. So I'd rather not make a definite pronouncement on the subject. Uh, but it was written in 1971. And Wilson was rejected by several publishers, including Random House and Simon & Schuster, who called the book, respectively, too graphic and too extreme, um, especially in reference to the infamous <clears throat> throating scene. If you know, you know. Depressed by the rejection and beginning to question himself, Wilson ended up disowning the manuscript, and he went on to make a pretty decent living writing cozy mysteries under a pseudonym, which I'm not going to tell you about because I don't care. I, I don't like mysteries. Well, um, what's going on right now is that this book, The Journey, has been rediscovered and revised um, by an independent horror press. It's called Henbane Press, and they're really doing the Lord's work, so check them out. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, the publishing is still, I believe, upcoming. It's either just now coming out or about to come out. Um, but Henbane Press reached out to Juan of Plagued by Visions, um, to see if he wanted to review an arc of the book before it came out, drum up some support for it. Um, of course he said yes, and then came to the rest of the booktube community to get us in on the action. So thank you so much to Juan. Uh, at least, I think thank you. Like I said, I'm still not sure whether I'm glad I've read this one, but it is fun to be involved in something exciting like this. Just stealing myself for what comes ahead. Okay, so like I said, I'm still absorbing the journey. I read it pretty quickly. Curiosity will do that. And uh, I don't know if this is the kind of book you should really speed through all in one day. Um, I would suggest anybody here who hasn't read it yet proceed to read it with caution. Um, okay, so this isn't really the kind of book you can summarize, both because the plot's not necessarily that important to the experience, and because what there is of the plot is easily spoilable. So, you know, I'm just gonna stick with the basic if you know, you know on that one. But it's almost, it's almost an existential novel. I mean, obviously the journey is a metaphor as you would expect on anything called the journey. Although, can you really call a novel existential when 
there's so much graphic embodied horror. You know, it's very visceral in that sense. Yet at the same time, it's almost too nightmarish to really call it grounded. I'm probably going to be really embarrassed later that I don't have something more coherent to say about this book and uh, I don't know. Maybe this will become a two-parter, the review and the re-review. I'm going to be real with you guys. There's a part of me that still doesn't fully get 70s horror. And maybe I just haven't absorbed enough of it. I mean, for example, I haven't even read The Exorcist or Rosemary's Baby, although I have seen both movies. I don't know. Something isn't quite clicking for me. And I almost think this is a book that will work better for me on a reread, especially if I'm more experienced with reading 70s horror at the time. Um, some novels just need to be placed in their historical context. One thing I'll say, and again, I don't want to give too much away, so I'm going to sort of talk around the details of the plot. Um, but horror of this time of this time period, the seventies, but really the t most of the twentieth century, even some modern horror, of course, struggles with a certain element of misogyny. But there's one character in the journey, Mary, who is really interesting to me because she inhabits this liminal space that I think of as particularly characteristic of female characters in the 70s and 80s, where she's kind of hovering between the autonomous woman, proto-girl boss, think Kate Beaton's 80s, 80s business lady, um, you know, sisters are doing that for themselves kind of thing. And in between that and the sort of object of male admiration slash protection, almost a damsel in distress, updated, um, think any woman in an 80s action movie. Um, so she's kind of in between these. And in her character, it becomes pretty clear that uh, William Lily Wilson had some progressive urges, pretty common in the time period. Um, you know, he he saw that society wasn't getting it quite right. You know, he gives us in Mary a character who really makes her own decisions and reacts to the incredible violence of her circumstances with surprising psychological realism. And yet, he was also clearly dealing with conflicting patriarchal anxieties that hindered his progressive attitudes, uh, which is reflected in Mary's ultimate fate. If you know, you know. Uh, so that's interesting. I'm really curious to see what we as a community end up making of this character. Um, what else to say about this book? Whew. What I will say for this book is that it made me think about my own spine more than any other book ever has. Maybe a little more than I'm actually comfortable with. But then, I suppose all great literature should make you feel a certain amount of discomfort. I don't know if this one really hits the comfort the afflicted, but um, afflict the comfortable? That it does. I think there's something to be said about a light element of homoeroticism in this novel as well. There is a particularly nasty, almost delicately detailed scene involving two male characters and um, the soles of one of these characters' feet. I mean, it's torture, but there is almost an element of the homoerotic yassification of torture. You know, kind of like in Hannibal season three. You know what? I think I do like this book. Oh, now I definitely need a drink. 
you know, I don't normally experience a lot of shame, just generally in my life, I don't care for it. And I try not to put moral value on anyone's choices as a reader, especially my own, because yikes, what would that say about me? But I'm starting to wonder about myself after reading this book. I guess maybe the journey was inside of us all along. I don't know, guys. This one's really getting to me. Um, I'm definitely thinking it might take some reflection, some discussion once it finally comes out and kind of goes around more, um, and then maybe a reread down the line and a reevaluation. But I am really interested to see what you guys all think, uh, to see everybody else's advanced reviews, and to kind of see where this goes, um, what journey we shall go on together. Right, Gandalf? Gandalf says he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. I've been disowned. That's fair. Comment, I guess.